In the village. What do you want? Information. Whose side are you on? That would be telling. We want information. 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 You won't get it. By hook or by crook, we will. Who are you? The new number two. Who is number one? You are number six. I am not a number. I am a free man. <laughs> Is. To them, isn't it? But I'm not one of them. No. What do you want? Help. Go to the town hall. The Citizens' Council promises help and advice to everyone. Their Citizens' Council? As far as I'm concerned, what's theirs is yours. I am not one of them. No. No one is. Go back. Tell them I was not interested, that I wouldn't even listen. What's the point? They know already. I won't go for it. Whatever it is. So you may as well stop crying. We never stop number six. Now we'll see how accurately they've timed it. She was given a drug yesterday, one of the new super strength mopropamates that we've developed. She doesn't know anything about it, of course. Yesterday? Hmm. Well, the drug remains dormant until triggered by the nervous system, and then it releases itself uh, to the desired quantities to produce instant tranquility or, you know, temporary oblivion. But why? Hmm? Well, in, in anticipation of number six throwing her out, which uh, he was about to do. And will, when she revives. No, 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 no. You see, she's become a lady in distress, and he's going to be all good deeds and sympathy, and I've still got a few moments before she comes to... I don't recall my procedure and gentle authorizing the door to being left open like... It was an afterthought to make certain that once the girl made up her mind to go and see him, She'd have access. Doesn't she know how to knock on a door, then? He doesn't always answer. It seemed like a good idea. But it wasn't. Because now, he is going to assume that we sent her. And we don't want that, do we? Do we? No. Now, this plan is too important for...
Look at that. Exactly the time the chemist anticipated. Sorry. Exhaustion. No. Drugs. Your pupils are contracted. I don't take drugs. Forced feeding them. Hmm? Why would they? You tell me. I mean you, you condescend to listen? I listen as long as what you're saying doesn't become too obviously phony, yes. I'll find help somewhere else. They told you to find it here, didn't they? Leave what you like, it doesn't matter anymore. No, it does matter. This concerns the welfare of everybody in this village. And welfare is our biggest consumer item, yes? Yeah? Joke about this if you can. Assassination. Are you trying to organize or prevent one? Prevent? They would have to take reprisals. Everybody would suffer. All right, what can I do for you? I just told you I need your help in preventing an assassination. They've heard. They are aware. And they don't need anyone's help. They don't believe me. No comment. So much caution in a man like you, it seems so wrong. Many times bitten, forever shy. But they are not shy. They love to listen. You don't understand my, my name, my number on a list. Honours or deportation? Jamming. Jamming? Uh, domestic science? You'll learn about jamming one of these days. It's the most important ways of fighting back. All right, enlighten me now. No. I tell lies, remember? I'm sorry I ever bothered you. Call in any time you like. If only I had just a little bit more time. We're running late. Yes, sir. At once. <clears throat> Number two here. Yes, I realize that, but what put us behind was the girl's hesitancy. As, as you know, she took a long time making up her mind to see him. Well, I had hope catching up, but number six flatly refused to have anything to do with her, and that caused another delay. Well, perhaps if we could replace him with someone more tractable, less suspicious. Well, I, I, I realize that, sir. The reason why we selected number six, a, a matter of credibility without which the plan might backfire. Indeed, I will, sir. As you say, I must find a way to make him interested. Today's activity prognosis on number six. Quickly as possible. Stand by for priority. Stand by for priority. Today's activity prognosis on number six. Number two requires it. Six thirty a.m. Subject exercises daily with a walk round the village. Daily subject climbs the bell tower. Reason unknown. Subject eccentric. Certainly watching, waiting, constantly aggressive. Is possible that subject likes the view. 7.30 a.m. Physical workout with subject's homemade apparatus. The subject cooling off. Nine o'clock a.m. Coffee at cafe and buys newspaper. Nine 
9.20 a.m., subject will proceed on foot to old people's home for a game of chess ending with an 11-move checkmate win by subject. Subject humors other eccentric resident by sitting for portrait. Or perhaps subject has ulterior motive. Satisfied with your progress to date on plan Division Q? Huh? My division will be operational exactly on time. You can quote me in your report. Mm, mm, yes, well, I, I shall. <clears throat> you still confident of your cover? Any sign of penetration? No, they still think of me as just another prisoner. Getting along with your subject all right? Oh, we're kindred spirits. Comrades. There'll be no trouble from him. Mm. You moved. Sorry. What they do, these jammers, is talk. They talk about the plots they've been hatching. Plots? Well, escapes mostly, but uh, plans and developments for all kinds of mischief. They do it to confuse the observers. Still, please. So, so sorry. The plots they talk about are always make-believe. Non-existent. A control can't know that until they've checked them out. Used to run themselves ragged investigating the schemes of jammers. Used to? Well, they don't bother much anymore. Now they keep a list of all known jammers. Anything control picks up from these, they just let ride. I see. What do you think? Perfect likeness. <laughs> Good morning. I brought you the activities prognosis you ordered. Good. How accurate are these? Uh, what is the percentage of right and wrong? I'm afraid we don't know that. Why not? Oh, twice we programmed our machines for a percental appraisal of their own efficiencies. Each time they refused to give back the requested information. Refused? How? Simply by not returning the data to us. They'll be wanting their old trade union next. Uh, well, go ahead and read it out to me, please. It is now 10.19, exactly. According to the prognosis, the subject is now taking his daily stroll through the village. Mm, go on. At approximately 10.20, he will go to the kiosk. There he will buy a copy of the newspaper, bar of soap, and a bag of sweets. Oh, no, no. He never eats candy. According to the prognosis... It doesn't matter about the prognosis. It's wrong. It doesn't work. It'll only take a moment to find out. All right. Go ahead. But I must have them. For the last time. Your week's credit allowance is all used up. Come back tomorrow. But I can't go through an entire day without my sweets. I'm sorry. Yes? Sorry. Um, back of candy for the baby. Um, my apologies. How did you know? Efficient prognosis programming must include a quantum permutation of all cause and effects of supplementary elements. In, in other words, the computer calculated the old woman's behavior would change the behavior pattern of number six. The subject will proceed on foot to the old people's home, where at approximately 10.45, he will undertake a game of chess with number 82. Game to last approximately 15 minutes, ending with an 11-move checkmate win by number six. They will commence a second chess match. <clears throat> Doesn't matter about the chess matches. Uh, go on. Between 11.40 and 11.50, he will arrive at the gymnasium for his semi-weekly kosho practice. That's it. Well, there's more. He's very active. I don't want to know any more. I've found what I want. Thank you. Yes, number two. Uh, you know what I have in mind.
afternoon. Good afternoon. It's uh, stopped. Just be a moment. All right. Perfectly, friend. Exactly. It wasn't very difficult, but I still don't understand why is it necessary to expose our method. It'll all be explained to you in time. No, now. What can we gain by letting him know what we're up to, the enemy? We add to their confusion. So we stand to gain. You see, they don't believe anything we say or do, or intend to do. That's why we're able to carry out our plan. I saw you go in. How did you find out? Big Paul? I never mentioned the watchmaker to you. What put you on to him? Uh, my, uh, my watch. It stopped. Is that the only reason you called on my father? Father? Oh, that explains why you're so concerned. And you? Same total disinterest? Not quite the same, no. What's happened? What's made you so interested? Because I don't believe that a device to detonate explosives by radio is a toy. And uh, neither does your father. Is it? I suppose it may work. It is working. But I'll take the bows later on. Whatever you like to call it, Plan Division Q is still murder. You have your specific duties. Stick to them. Leave the rest to one double zero. And you think number six has fallen for it? No, no, not yet. But he will. He will. And after it's all over, you will be showered with official congratulations. Yes. Well, after he's been here to warn me that an assassination is being plotted... ...and that I am the intended victim. Tell me what you know. Very little. The victim? Number two. Go on. That's it. I don't know anything else. Not when they intend doing it, nor how, nor where. They? Yes, there's another man. I've seen him, but uh, don't ask me who he is. Who's anyone here? Come on. Let's go see your father. What for? Do you think you can make him listen to reason? Maybe, if he's still able to. You, uh, you are certain of your subject's indoctrination. I've never had a failure yet, and I won't have one with the watchmaker. You'll soon see. Hello, Father. Ah, uh, Monique. I believe you've already met this gentleman. Yes, a short while ago. It has stopped again. Uh, it's, uh, it's running well. Father, we've come to talk to you. I can guess what about. It's not difficult to look on your face there. Tone of your voice. Besides, do we ever talk of anything else? Well, we used to, before this insane idea got hold of you. Now you see me as a madman, hmm? Oh, Father, you must give it up, I beg you. For my sake. Not again! Sick of your begging and whining, you hear? No more of it, no more! You refuse to understand. What I'm doing is for a principle. We are in this prison for life. All of us. But I've met no one here who has committed a crime. I'll protest in a manner 
they cannot ignore. Some other way, then. Not by an act of murder. Assassination! Call it what you like. The important matter is that the entire village will be punished. Maybe it is what they need to wake them up, to shake them out of their lethargy, to make them angry enough to Assuming fight. Assuming they survive the punishment. What's the use? You'll never understand. Oh, Father, it's you who doesn't understand. I must get back to my work. I must be ready in time. Father! I must get on with my work. My apologies. Well done. Yeah, since he cannot reason with the watchmaker, he must come here to warn you. Camera one, are you ready? Camera one, ready, sir. Stay alert. Camera two. Camera two, ready, sir. Audio. All set, number two. This is not a social call. Oh. Well, then, uh, to what do I owe the pleasure of your company? I'm here to deliver a warning. A warning? What about? A plot to kill you. To what? To kill you. Assassinate you. Huh? Assassinate you. I don't believe it. They should have told you there are some unhappy people here. Yes, well, I, I have seen the list of malcontents. But you, it might interest you to know that you happen to be top of the bill. I'll do my best to live up to it. Yeah, what, by uh, saving my despicable life? Not for your sake. Oh, uh, what then? If they succeed in killing you, uh, what action would your people take? Oh, well, they would punish those responsible for... What else would you expect them to do? Punish everyone. A mass reprisal, a never-to-be-forgotten deterrent. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I still don't believe it. My observers would have told me that they do see and hear everything, you know. Uh, they don't believe everything. You're referring to jamming. Ah, no, jamming. Well, naturally, when uh, a person is known to us as one who continually... Oh, don't tell me it. It's the little watchmaker that concerns you. Yes, well, we know we expected something like this, that they tried to get through to us through a, a dupe. Mm. You to lead us into believing their fantasies. Uh, tell me, how did they sell you the idea, number six, they show you the gun? Uh, they're not going to shoot you. They're going to blow you up. Well, uh, did they tell you how they're going to go about it, or uh, where, when? Would you find out for me, because well, the laugh will do me... You may find out yourself, quite suddenly. In which case, you won't be laughing. Vision, did you get that? Camera one, perfect. Camera two, perfect, sir. Audio. Loud and clear, sir. What did he say? He thinks I'm being used as a communications medium, one more credible than your father. You don't believe him? I wouldn't know. Going on with it? 
I haven't much choice. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I have some exciting news for you. Your Citizen Council officially proclaimed Thursday, the day after tomorrow, as an appreciation day. The day when we pay due honor to those brave and noble men who govern us so wisely. You will all be delighted to hear that the proceedings will be opened with an address by number two himself and concluded by the unveiling of our new appreciation monument. There'll be speeches, thrills, and excitement. Maybe more excitement than planned. Seal of office, always worn by number two at ceremonies. It looks as though your father is making a replica. Why? Plastic explosive to be detonated by radio. expecting you. I want to see number two. I am number two. You've come to tell me there's a plot against my life, haven't you? You know, my colleague is very concerned about these imminent death by violence projects that you've been reporting during my absence. Plots? I've reported one only. Not so. My very efficient colleague, or should I say my heir presumptive, has been collecting evidence that every interim number two who has served here while I've been on leave has been cautioned by you about some improbable conspiracy to murder him. Really? You obviously don't believe me. Well, the psychiatrist warned me that that might be the case. Shall I show you proof? Please go ahead. My successor. Should I say my heir presumptive? Ah, number six. My dear fellow, do come in, do come in. I'm here to deliver a warning. A warning? Uh, what about? Plot to kill you. Shall I continue? Go ahead. They're going to what? Kill you. Assassinate you. What did you say? Assassinate. More? I bother. So you're convinced? I'm convinced that those excerpts are fakes. You mean they'd be doctored? For what purpose? Why should we want to convince you that you're not well? Perhaps it's you they want to convince. Me? <laughs> Tomorrow I hand over to my successor. I retire. Perhaps they're trying to save a pension. What was the reason for it? To discredit me. Why? I was the only one he might have believed. What would he have been doing that, though? Planning an assassination. 
With number two? With his stand in. Perhaps. Send someone to the Bureau of Visual Records. There's a tape I want to review. At once. Subject? Subject, warning of an assassination plot. Persons, number six, and my successor. Well, get on with it. It would be a waste of time. There is no recording of that description. How strange. You must have been misinformed. Strange. Though you have no duty functions in the Bureau of Visual Records, you can state instantly, and with total assurance, that the records I require are non-existent. Please explain. No, number two, I'm not able to. I understand. The fact that you won't explain explains everything. Absolutely, sir. Just as it's been planned, it's going like uh, clockwork. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, no, no, there's no danger of that. Number six is no problem. We have fully convinced him. Uh, you do have my word. Just to remind you good people everywhere, the big day is tomorrow. Appreciation Day. Remember, folks, speeches by number two and the unveiling of the magnificent appreciation monument. Don't miss it. Come one, come all. Be seeing you. So if they're going to do away with the man, file the rigmarole, why don't just go ahead and do it? What would the rank and file think? They're due for retirement themselves one day. They brainwashed my father into doing their dirty work. What'll happen to him? What'll they do? Thank you very much. Please, we must prevent this thing. My father's sake. For everybody's sake. I've already told you, I don't want to see anyone. Tell him to go away. I left orders that I was not to be disturbed. I have to say, won't wait. I know what it is. Tomorrow, after I've handed over office, I'm to be assassinated. For assassinated, substitute, executed. Since it's arranged by my own people, you mean? You don't mind? Of course I mind. It's just that, well, I never thought it would happen to me. It never does, to anybody. But it can be prevented. Preventing is only postponing. You never understood us, number six. We never fail. Anyway, why should you care what happens to me? I don't, but innocent people will be blamed. No. I'm sorry, but there's nothing that I can do. The ceremony can take place without the seal. The seal is the ceremony. It's hollowed out, it's packed with explosives. And before I hand it over to my successor... It will be detonated by radio. I can think of better ways to die. And better causes to die for. Plan Division Q all set. It's working beautifully. Dead on schedule, you could say. No, sir. No, no, just the way you ordered it. With the people already gathering it, it'll be very, uh, very spectacular. No, nothing can go wrong now. I'll, I'll stake my future on it. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, I know you will.
Appreciation Day to pay homage and to show our gratitude to our glorious leaders. Now is the moment to give thanks to our departing leader. Let us pay tribute to the great achievements of our entire number two. The improved cat you hear me. The end of the show. Hear me. Come in, please. I can hear you, Wilbur. Is everything all right? Everything's all right. Stop worrying. Repeat. Stop worrying. And the new clock golf, of course. We say thank you, number two, for the plans you have made for us. The new concert hall that will be built. And the beautiful mural in the library. And the electrification of the clocks. In saying goodbye, we salute you for your glorious achievement. Where's your father? He didn't come home last night. In the shop? No, he's not there. He must be here somewhere. Well, not necessarily. The transmitter he's using has a very wide range. He could be anywhere. Interesting and exciting. We're running out of time. Find out what's wrong and be quick about it. Yes. Right away, number two. Successors, you must forgive an old man for uh, talking so long, but this, this is a moment of great emotion for me. Is he all right? Yes. Let me have that. That's my way.
They've got a job for you. I want you to talk. Talk to a lot of people. In fact, the entire village. For a confession! <laughs> And so it is with great pride that I dedicate this magnificent monument which represents our appreciation of this great community. What for? It's your passport. No one will question its authority. The helicopter's waiting. They'll get me eventually. Fly now, pay later. They'll find me, wherever I am. As long as it's not here. Take it and go. day is nearly over. It went off rather well, I thought. Better than planned. And now you can look forward to your own retirement, and I'm sure they'll arrange something equally suitable for you when the day comes.